solid get right weekend. Give you an idea of what Brennan is doing here through the first two weeks of action and, and where LSU has come from as far as quarterback play is considered and what we uh, and what we saw last season from Joe Burrow. And shout out to Joey as he gets his first win on Sunday. Uh, he does that yesterday over the Jacksonville Jaguars and becomes the first quarterback in NFL history to start the first three weeks and all three weeks throw for 300. So shout out to Burrow. But check this out. Todd Polites who is really the brains behind all social media and anything factual as far as numbers are concerned over at LSU, uh, tweeted out 20 hours ago at T. Polites. Here is how Miles Brennan, at Miles Brennan's first two starts, rank in LSU football history among quarterbacks with two starts since 1957. He's thrown for 682 yards. That's first. He's got 50 completions. That's first. He's got seven touchdown passes. That's first. He has 83 attempts, which is third behind Rohan Davey, who had 94, and Josh Booty with 87. So an idea of where Brennan and what he's done through the first two weeks of action. And yes, it was a bounce-back game for him, and he looked so much more comfortable, and I thought that went hand-in-hand hand with the play calling from upstairs. Yeah, yeah uh, what's interesting about the graphic you put up, too, and because, look, an element of this is just that LSU is playing a more wide-open offense than they ever had before, but it's not the whole story, right? Because he's third in attempts. So it's not like nobody has ever thrown at this rate before at LSU. He was just been more successful in those throws than anybody else has. But yeah, I mean, when when you're talking about Saturday's game, it absolutely looked like that coaching staff uh, had a much clearer vision of how to tailor that offense around Miles Brennan's strengths. Uh, I think by games in, the first down run pass split may have been about 50. I think it was 50-50. I think it was 16-16. If it wasn't, it was like 50. You know, it, it's maybe one number off. Either way, essentially 50-50, keeping the defense on its heels. Uh, that led to more second and manageable, which led to more third and manageable, an average third down distance to go of six yards, which is really good. They still need to convert those at a higher rate, but that's really solid. And what you saw them do with Miles, uh, I, I mean, the, the two biggest things to me are I, I, I love the fact that they focused on getting the ball out quickly not making him make all the tough decisions, uh, especially early on, and kind of get back to the core edict of last year's offense, get the ball to playmakers in space. And you saw that a lot early on with these little swing routes, these little dump-offs to the back, Jordy, which are essentially extended handoffs. Um, it's something that Sean Payton's talked about a lot in the past, and, and it worked wonders for for easing Miles uh, kind of into the game while also setting up the play action for later in the game. I thought the... LSU offensive line dominated in the run blocking department, which made the the play action and the RPOs hit as well. Uh, but but probably the main thing that I really loved out, out, out of Brennan this game, Jordy, my biggest concern last week, more than the decisiveness and the decision making, because I think that'll all come with time on task and reps. Um, pocket presence can be a funny thing, right? Guys can just kind of be shaky and never really get it. Uh, his pocket presence this week, looked like a completely different quarterback. It looked like he had full trust in that offensive line. He was stepping up, delivering the ball, navigating. Last week, if he felt any pressure, he was rolling to the outside. A lot of times, he was screwing over his tackles and rolling into pressure. This time, he trusted Liam Shanahan. He trusted Chase and Ides. He trusted Ed Ingram, who had a monster game, uh, to keep him protected, and he was rewarded for doing so. Um, hopefully, later in this week, I think I've figured out ways around the copyright laws. So I'm hoping I can break down some of this film for y'all on Twitter. But um, I, I I love so much about Brennan's performance here. I mean, holding safeties with his eyes to open up the middle of the field on one of the Terrace Marshall touchdowns uh, on the flea flicker touchdown, right? A lot of questions about his toughness last week. He knew he was going to get demolished. He knew he was going to get lit up, and he did. He got double teamed, uh, but he still stood tall, delivered a beautiful deep ball to the back of the end zone. Next thing you know, it's a perfectly thrown touchdown, and you see exactly what you want to see out of your quarterback here in game two. Miles Brennan deserves the uh, deserves the, the, the highlights and, and the respect this morning after his play, but a lot of the guys around him were helping him out on Saturday specifically. You mentioned that flea flicker. What about the day that John Trey Kirkland had yeah. at wide receiver? Three, ga- uh, three grabs for Kirkland, 65 yards, two of those scores on his first touchdown, leading the, leading the way. Uh, out on out in front was Cam Wire, uh, the, uh, the the tackle who stepped in to play for Dare Rosenthal. I've got Wire down as a weekend winner coming up here at straight up eight o'clock for the way. 
that he responded to the opportunity that he got on Saturday. Ed Ingram out there laying pancakes as well. The offensive line, I thought, played really Ed, good. If, if people are going back and watch highlights, uh, and hopefully we'll get to this this week, if I can figure out a way to do this around the copyright laws, watch Ed Ingram on the John Tree Kirkland screen. That's what I'm saying. Oh, okay, yeah. I mean, I mean he's <laughs> killing. Look at this. Okay, cats. back that up, Danny. Back that up again. Watch how powerful. Ed, back it up even from the side view if you can, because that's an even better angle. Because you can really get an idea of how his body just flies. His punch. That's just a punch. That wasn't even like full body weight or hips or anything. He's just so strong right now. And welcome, John Emery. You have arrived, son. It is your. It's yeah. your backfield. I mean, I mean, yeah. he should be the feature back. He looks like he is a step away every single time he touches the ball. He can catch it. He can run it. His vision looks right. His speed looks right. I think that John Emery is the best running back on this team, and I love Ty Davis Price. Chris Curry was dressed out. He didn't play, and I thought Price ran it really well. But when you're looking at Emery and the rest of the room side by side, I don't think it's close. I think John Emery is the best running back on this team, and he needs to be featured because he is a home run hitter and can change the scoreboard at seemingly any point on the field and any point on the game. And I'd like to see him get 18 to 20 touches every Saturday. Yeah, I mean, I, with, with how, I mean, one of the other best parts about Saturday game, how about 11 different receivers catching the ball? Yeah. And like an element of that. What about the stat line for Terrace Marshall? Yeah. Two catches, 67 <laughs> yards, two touchdowns with an average of 33 and a half yards per catch. But but I guess where, 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 where I'm going with that is that I, I – I think 18 to 20 touches is going to be tough to accomplish, maybe, for, for any single player in this offense. Um, we'll see. But but certainly after this game, it kind of feels like, is Emery like two-thirds of the running back touches and then Curry and TDP split the other third? Because uh, TDP had a nice game as he well. Did. It just, I, I do agree, he's not. Where, where Emery really stood out to me, um, and if you go back and watch, there's a couple you really want to highlight. His pass blocking yes. was really good. Which is what kept him off the field. Exactly. And when you're talking about pass pro, that's how you make yourself into an elite third down back. Something Clyde was very good at. Uh, it means that you can leave him on the field and trust him now. So I'm starting to think, like, let uh, look at how the Saints use Murray and, and Kamara and let, like, you know, let TDP, Chris Green, maybe they're more of your first down back. And then Emery's kind of your second and third down guy because he is so dynamic about the pass game and the run game. Yeah, to me, Miles Brennan was MVP 1A because of the expectation on him. But then right behind him is John Emery for MVP 1B. Now, look, it was Vanderbilt, and you were just clearly physically superior and better than Vanderbilt. Now, they had a good showing against A&M, but whatever. Like, th th this was never a game where... Uh, th th this is not to say that this will be the standard going forward for how well this team played Saturday, but it is exactly what they needed as a young team yeah. that is learning how to play on the SC level. This is the type of success they needed just to show that you can do it. Now the next step is show that you can do it against the better teams. Virg Osbury from LSU Athletics next.